Judging people is like a tasty poison. Tasty in the way that it gives you a sense of superiority when you judge someone, but poisonous in the way that it disconnects you from people, and in the way that a habit of judging others can become a habit of judging yourself. A harshly judgmental mind can be a mean mind, and you don't want to carry a mean mind with you through life. Because in those moments of isolation, when you're alone with your thoughts, it's crucial to your well-being that those thoughts be kind, and you can shape them to be so. Social psychologists have developed what is known as attribution theory, which explains how we think about others and can help us understand the psychology of judging people. An attribution is a reason you come up with for why someone did what they did, or why they are the way they are. An internal attribution is when you attribute someone's behavior to their personal characteristics, to their disposition, their nature. An external attribution is when you attribute someone's behavior to impersonal factors, situational factors, things that were likely outside the person's control. And these conclusions we draw about people's behavior can happen almost instantaneously. But we can also pause and reevaluate them, making them more intentional, checking them for accuracy. This is what psychologist Daniel Kahneman calls type 1 and type 2 thinking. Type 1 thinking is unconscious, fast, and automatic. Type 2 is conscious, slower, and deliberate. Type 1 thinking, although useful, is much more prone to inaccuracy. And that's the thing, we are not always accurate when drawing conclusions about the sources of other people's behavior. Even if we engage in type two thinking, we often commit fundamental attribution errors, which are false conclusions about why someone did what they did. We can misattribute someone's behavior to internal factors when it's really due to external factors, situational factors such as when you see a person come into a meeting late, roll your eyes, and judge that they are unreliable and disorganized, when in reality, an unforeseeable traffic jam held them up. You can also misattribute someone's behavior to external factors when they really are due to internal factors, like saying that a man abused his spouse because he was just stressed out from work, when the reality is that he abused because he's an abusive person. Now, in order to determine whether an internal or external attribution is the right conclusion, you need longitudinal data. You need to observe the person throughout time and develop an understanding of the many factors that influence their behavior. What judgmental minds do is make internal attributions about the mishaps of others, their failures, shortcomings, or immoral behavior. So they messed up because they suck. They lied because they're a jerk. They're speeding on the road because they're an idiot. And judgmental minds tend to make external attributions about the successes of others, their high performance, their strengths, and respectable behavior. So they did well because they got lucky. They won because their teammates are really good. It's interesting to think about the difference between judging and assessing someone. Although both involve thinking critically about the individual's behavior and discerning truths about the individual, an assessment is done respectfully, even if it is unfavorable. There is an objectivity, a neutrality to assessing people. When we judge, we don't care about respecting the person. We don't care about understanding them. And there is a personal and mean quality to it. Assessing other people brings you no sense of superiority over them. Judging does bring you a sense of superiority. And judging people is usually so quick, so biased, that it leads to totally misunderstanding people. On an assessment level, when it comes to your skills, your talents, your intelligence, of course you are superior to some people and inferior to some people, but when it comes to your worth as a person, you are superior to no one and inferior to no one. This is the core value, the foundation on which a kind mind can be cultivated. Your mind has its existing patterns, and if you're normal, your mind can get 
judgmental at times, and there's a guilty pleasure that comes with it. And you've probably already noticed the poisonous nature of this mental habit. You've noticed how hurtful the harshly judgmental mind can be when it turns on its host, when you start judging yourself, assuming that everything that has not gone well in your life is your fault. It's toxic and contrary to healthy mental habits. You can build new mental habits. You can cultivate a kind mind. When we watch our minds bring awareness to our thought processes and exercise intentional thinking, type two thinking, we can begin to override and reprogram our type one thinking. We can begin to make it so that our default mode of thinking is non-judgmental. It takes awareness and effort at first, but withholding judgment or assessing without judging can become automatic and effortless. And this will translate to being kinder to others and kinder to yourself. Judging others gives you a sense of superiority, but the very same judgmental habit of mind, once it turns against you, will give you a sense of inferiority. And when you truly understand this, the poison doesn't even taste good anymore. If you like this video and you want to see more, please subscribe.